Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. He is Nick Martin. How are you, Nick? I'm good. How are you, man? I am good. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. I think you need to take your hat off and show our fans. You didn't you did. get 10 <laughs> seconds in to this episode, and you need to bring that up. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't you worry. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. I, I promise right. we'll get there. Uh, we cool. don't want to take uh, any of the lightning and the thunder and the enthusiasm away from today's incredibly awesome. And welcome to DadCast. Uh, let me introduce him first. He is a uh, member of the band Breaking Benjamin, formerly in Adelita's Way. He's got an amazing solo project going on, formerly of the band Copper, and probably like every other band you've ever heard of in your entire life. Welcome to DadCast, Mr. Keith Wallen. How are you, bud? How's it going? Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, that was uh, that was an amazing intro. Thank <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> I, I try. I do, I do my best. We we try to do it. Now here we found out before we got um, started uh, actually recording this thing today that you are in fact not a father. True. True. Okay. So I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the premise of Dadcast typically is uh, we talk with other dads. Uh, celebrity dads, musician dads, athlete dads, dads of all walks of life to discuss the path and the adventure that is being a father. Well, with that being said, and you are not being a dad, Keith, it's been amazing having you on and hope you have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, <laughs> peace out. <laughs> man, we're just playing. Uh, totally fine, man. We do guests all the time. Um, you know, just because it's called dad cast, that doesn't necessarily mean the guests have to be dads. The fact that we are dads will still hold that title up in this episode just fine. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, uh, I normally have a first question. Can't ask you that. I already know the answer. So I will ask you this question instead. First question, Keith Wallen, is fatherhood an option for you in the future? Um, never say never. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but... Really, that's it. Uh, that's that's where where we're at with it, um, dude. Kids are scary. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Terrifying, you know. It, I've been an, I've been an uncle for for a long time, and um, all of my good friends, all of my 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 best friends have have all started having kids. So it's it's been fun being Uncle Keith, but uh, mm -hmm. it's also been nice to 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 be like, all right, guys, see you later, Uncle Keith. <laughs> right, exactly. Leaving. You can you can hand them back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We don't, we don't have that luxury and I ain't going to lie. I would, sometimes you know, I would give anything for that luxury. <laughs> sometimes it's uh, and don't get me wrong. Being a dad is one of the greatest gifts ever bestowed upon me. And I wouldn't ever, ever change it for anything, but I <laughs> would what, give it up for a day or two, you know, <laughs> yeah, like what, times you want to go to Vegas and you think it's a great idea to bring an infant. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah, life, that's that's life what from everybody me. That's what everybody I know uh, says. They says it. They say it's uh, the most amazing thing, life changing thing, and they wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And and um, and while I I don't know that feeling firsthand, I I feel like I can empathize a little bit. You know, um, I, I can I can see how, um, you know, uh, how you could just love something, love someone more than yourself. You know, I uh, you know. It's I know you guys are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really know because, you know, obviously, yeah. But, uh, but you know, I can, I can kind of understand a little bit, for, not firsthand, but the best I can, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of a very strange concept and, uh, and something to think about is watching on a daily basis uh, your heart walking around out of your body. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy, right? Oh, deep. Not deep there. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Keith, let's okay. So we've covered that. Kids, maybe never, never can tell. Yeah. Let's then let's shift gears. We're going to go into something that I'm sure you are used to, uh, something that is typical for you when you're being interviewed. Although this is long form, so we can actually get into the nitty gritty. Um, tell us about. Well, you know what? No, let me rephrase. Right now, what is the number one on the top of the list project you got going on? Is it Breaking Benjamin? Is it your solo career? <clears throat> what do we got going on that? to you is most important in life as we speak? Um, really, I mean, gosh, it's, it's, it's tough to, you know, the, the, probably the most important thing in my life right now, as far as project is just really taking the time to, uh, to stay positive in it, 
extremely negative and hard world. I know that's kind of uh, the a different answer than the choices that you gave me, but at this point, I feel like uh, we are living in extremely um, interesting and uh, kind of just bummer times. Yeah, it's the and, twilight uh, zone for real, isn't it? Man, it is. It is, and uh, you know, it's really, it's really tough. You know, we've obviously we're we're in this awful pandemic. You know, there was there was a maybe a, a minute or two where we're like, all right, maybe we're going to make it through this. And now, obviously, it's just it's not <laughs> doing too well at the moment. But um, you know, that being said, I still I still am not losing track of hope and 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 the belief that we can get back to a, a more normal world and a more normal uh, society where people can show each other respect, even though they don't agree on every little thing. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've done my um, I've done a lot of work to try and avoid uh, being political in any way. Like I'm, I'm a musician. I want to try to be the escape from all that kind of stuff and all that kind of negativity. And, and, and I'm going to continue to to do that. So, I'm just trying to um, be positive and promote positivity. And, uh, you know, because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of just mental health struggles happening right now, whether it be the job, the pandemic, the the isolation from family, um, just the whole world in general being different than what it was two years ago. You know, I look at I look at, you know, I'll be watching a show or something. I'm just oh look at that. I'm like, look at that. They don't even have masks like wow, I remember that. That was great. You know, you just have this little mourning in your heart of the pre COVID world. And it's just, it just sucks, you know? Uh, so I, I try to just really just, I don't know, focus on the positive, but I mean, as far as like your question more specifically, since this is the, uh, the long form answer, as yes. you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I digress a little bit there, but, uh, yeah, I, I I think both are very important to me. Uh, Breaking Benjamin obviously is is my band, and, and I love I love playing with those guys. It's it's uh, it's the best, um, and it's allowed me a, a little bit of um, off time to work on other stuff that I feel that maybe is not quite the right fit for Breaking Benjamin. So I think they're equally important to me. You know, um, you know, I don't want to just. Um, you know, if we have time off, I don't want to, you know, just relax too much. I want to, I want to be able to make as much music as I can, you know, cause I know that there's going to be one day when I'm super old, I'm kind of old now, but there's going to be one day when I'm super old and I'm going to be thinking back and, and I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to be like, man, if only I had just written more music or, or sang some more songs or, went on some more tours and really just, you know, I just was so, I was too lazy and I just sat around in the off time and, you know, I just don't want to have that feeling. I want to, I want to look back on a career and a, and a life well lived and, and uh, use whatever skills and whatever I have now while I still have it uh, to make as much music as I can. So that's really it. You know, I, I think, um, a lot of people, when you when you look at somebody making a solo album, you know, they're like, oh, this is such an ego. This is kind of an ego kind of thing. You know, they're, they're just wanting to just, you know, make something that's just me, me, me. And I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it's completely not that, you know, but I, I, I want to just I don't know. I just love making music. I love writing songs and um, people seem to like some of the stuff that I put out. And I definitely want to try and just keep doing that and and keep making people happy with whatever kind of offering I can give. And obviously, um, still working tireless, tirelessly on uh, Breaking Benjamin, uh, you know, pretty close to full time uh, also. So, um, oh, man, I love that. That's it, man. Yeah, that's a long answer, but uh, that's really truth. I just I love making music. It's the one thing that I've feel like I'm the best at as far as everything that I've ever tried to do in my life. Um, and it's just, I feel like music is the closest thing to actual magic that we have in this world that can really just change your whole, you know, your whole mood, your whole feeling, your whole anything. And um, so anyway, that's a good answer. Yeah. Sorry, my you made, green you my freaking out. Is better with uh, your solo stuff, by the way. Like I, I love it. It's so good. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. 
Yeah, Good it's, stuff. It's, I, I noticed uh, behind you because that's one of my uh, my 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 secret hobbies is to analyze guests' backgrounds, and I see that Saving Able uh, placard back there. Uh, I know mm. you've written a couple songs with those guys, and we actually had them on. Gosh, by the time this episode airs, probably about seven or eight episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. Little small world. Yeah, I uh, yeah one song I wrote with uh, their producer. Uh, Skid Mills. I never met any of the band members personally or have hmm. seen them or anything or talked to them or anything at all. Uh, but uh, super nice guys. If you ever do get to meet them, that's good. I figured they, they would be, you know, they're, they're from the South. Like, like I am. And most, most people from the South are pretty, pretty darn nice. So, yeah. So it's kind of a cool thing that we do on the side that nobody knows about yet is we actually manage bands. We, uh, we manage Jesse. Lawson. They know now. They know now. Yeah. <laughs> he was uh he was in Sleeping with Sirens for oh gosh, seven years. He wrote all their gold records. So he's actually writing songs for Hinder right now, which is kind of cool. Wow. Um, we also okay. manage a punk band out of Vegas called Sprockets, and we're working on another huge YouTube sensation that we should be able to announce pretty soon. I can't announce it yet, but right so on. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. So we got the podcast and music management. So we kind of understand, you know, the whole pandemic thing of everything's changing. There's a lot of virtual stuff going on now that we're having to adapt to. And yeah. So we yeah, actually have a concert that's... coming up on Friday that we're doing. That's they, I think we have like 60 in, in-person tickets sold and then we'll do mainly virtual, which is weird. I've been doing concerts for 20 years and it's really strange to have your audience out there in the world somewhere and not right in front of you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've begun kind of thinking about that, you know, uh, ideally we'd all like to go back to just playing shows and having that, that real life interaction with, with fans and artists and, and, um, you know, but it's like, gosh, it's, it's like what I said, times, it's interesting times, it's all unknown. So yeah. you kind of have to prepare for all, uh, different scenarios, you know, um, gosh, then the virtual, the virtual stuff, it's so expensive. I feel like, you know, because I've, I've thought about doing it myself, mm. uh, for, for my solo stuff. And, and it's just, man, the cost just adds up, you know, to really do it, to do it right. In my opinion, I mean, anybody can sit in their living room with an iPhone and be like, hey, you're coming to you live from my basement. You know, yeah. it's like, no, we have, we have a really cool system set up. There's a studio in downtown Grants Pass where I'm from okay. that has state of the art cameras, sound system, and they've got an engineer that sound, that makes the sound perfect for everything. The concerts we do are all interactive, so JP actually hosts them. And oh, we cool. have, the, the audience can ask questions that we can ask the artist during the concert, which is really cool. So we made it kind of uh, almost like you're there, but you're not. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. He, he ain't kidding, Keith. You, I mean, if you were to implement <clears throat> half of what uh, the Hive, that's uh, the name of the joint, um, if you're an implant financial half of what uh, of just the equipment they use to pull off this incredibly yeah it's it is super duper expensive then of course yeah. you know you need to know how to run it all and mm -hmm. edit it and make it all go smooth so yeah it's it's right. it is a pretty penny to do we it might have to far. get you out here with your solo stuff to do one of the events live from the hive with us that might be kind of cool yeah maybe man um yeah it's it's kind of like uh you know the, the future's unknown as far as touring schedule and, and, and writing schedule. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, like I said, I thought we were kind of back on the right track and things are kind of opening up. And mm -hmm. now it's just like one big question mark again, um, which is frustrating I me. Mean, obviously, you know, we, we, we want, um, you know, everybody to be safe. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's just tough, tough right now. Yeah. But that'd be awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd definitely like to to learn more about it. Cool. Yeah, buddy. I'm so I so I'm trying to find that article I was telling you about that uh <laughs> said you have children and I, I'm thinking I'm making myself out to be a liar now. Yeah, what no now what uh that's funny. What what were the kids? Was it two girls and what? It was two two goat boys and one one girl. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you have a brother and a sister? Uh, Maybe it's talking about your actual family here. That's funny. I am I am the baby of the family. I have two older brothers. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this because at this point, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. We got you. No, I, That's what's it's, important. I, I, think it's, I think it's great. I think it's so funny uh, that that... 
<laughs> it's probably Wikipedia and someone decided. I think I, think I actually it. found the same thing you found. because I, I think that's why I thought you were a dad. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, so hey, I know, I, I know I read somewhere that you had kids. Well, so. what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to, to thank whoever wrote that article uh, for leading me to you guys so I can hang out with y'all. So yes, it, it, it wasn't all for naught. <laughs> exactly. And again, for the record, even if you're not, we, we've been trying to get uh, – ladies on you know when yeah. you know women who are playing the role of a single dad or you know single mothers who have to play both roles etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, right we're uh we're still working on that one wasn't uh kathy ireland i think we're trying to get her on right nick right? Yeah. <laughs> i don't think she's single but you know regardless um keith so i've got a friend of mine he's actually a uh I, he's more of a he's a friend. He's a buddy of mine. I I, I kind of mentored him. I used to work in radio. I still work in radio, and uh, he's always comes to me for questions, et cetera, et cetera. The point of this long winded explanation is he very well could possibly be the biggest Breaking Benjamin fan I've ever known, and he. Wow. I know. I, I wouldn't. I don't want to go as far as to say he stalks you on Facebook, but <laughs> literally when I just was looking at some information about you, there he was commenting on your uh, on one of your most recent posts but i told him yesterday that i would arrange for keith from breaking benjamin to give him a shout out is that something you're willing to do absolutely so his name is zachary wangle ring a bell zachary wangle yeah that does not ring a bell all right well there you go zachary here it is keith just said your name on the on the podcast so man so. it's okay all right i gotta know a few things where does zachary live medford oregon medford oregon mm -hmm. and he is a radio uh he, dj he's actually or? a uh karate instructor um <laughs> okay <laughs> but a huge yeah uh, so he uh was interested in working in radio and uh, learning the ins and outs, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I was formerly the program director of a radio station that shall not be named. And he came in um, and I, you know, showed him the ropes, et cetera. I actually threw him on the air a couple of times. He wanted to learn awesome. about audio editing, et cetera, et cetera. But he's a huge fan. Took him to a couple of concerts to Papa Roach. Um, so cool. I was kind of like his big brother slash mentor type scenario. And That's learning awesome. all this, Breaking Benjamin, is he's, he's absolutely batshit crazy for the band. And not in a bad way. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Well, he just loves you guys. Well, well, Zachary, please know that we are so very, very, very grateful for you. We appreciate all the support. I personally appreciate all the support for my band, my solo stuff, all of the above. And uh, hopefully we'll be back in Oregon soon. And hopefully we'll, yeah, the world will return to normal and we can play shows and hang out and all of the above. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Speaking <laughs> of returning to normal and shows, so you guys just finished up tour, uh, was it a couple weeks ago, end of December? Yes, sir. Yeah, we had uh, an acoustic tour. Are there any tours set up for uh, this year? Anything in the Hope works? so. Hope so. Yeah, uh, it's we're definitely planning on doing a lot of touring. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I think it's just right now we're just kind of like waiting to see what's yeah. going to happen, you know, whether or not we're going to announce something or wait or it's one big question mark, you know. Um, so that's where we're at. How much difficulty did you and the and the guys in the band have uh, coming out of the first part of the pandemic in uh, 2020 and most of last year touring? Well, I wouldn't say it was difficulty. It was it was definite just. Uh, um I mean, excitement. It was, it was, we were just elated to, to be back and playing shows in any capacity. And, um, it was, it was really amazing to feel that feeling again of, uh, oh yeah, this is, this is what I've been doing for the last 20 years in the music industry. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. So to have that taken away, like it was, uh, was devastating. And so, uh, you know, to, to kind of get back in the saddle somewhat was a huge relief and thrilling. Uh, it was, it was great. And the shows and the tour was amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, I think at, at first we, I was, I personally was a little nervous. I was like, man, how do I play this shit? Cause it's been like, <laughs> an, an, you know, a year and a half. So, you know, it kind of was a little rusty, but you know, first show just felt great. And I was like, all right, we're good. You know? So 
And then we recently did this other tour, this acoustic tour, you know, um, still kind of just nothing really just, you know, um, nationwide yet, but still kind of, you know, dipping our toes in kind of easing into this thing, uh, this touring thing again. And, and it was a blast. Uh, it, it was, it was, it was so fun. We kind of, we wanted to kind of play more, more intimate places for this acoustic run. And, and, um, and I actually, I was, I was the opening act, uh, for, for this tour, which was, which was very thrilling. Um, yeah. And you, know, you much props. You effectively opened and closed for yourself. Yes. Yes. And I'm glad you said that because <clears throat> that was the running joke during the whole tour, uh, was, was, uh, yeah, that was, that was my thing. It was, it was pretty much like, okay, well, you know, lots of people, you know, I walk out there by myself to open the show and, you know, I don't assume everybody knows who I am and, and that I'm in the band and whatever, you know, I'm just like, I'm Keith Wallen. Thanks for being here early to hang with me. Uh, no, I did not leave breaking Benjamin. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I am opening for myself. Yes. Blah, blah. You know, so it was, it was kind of a funny thing. And, and Ben was, he was sure to, uh, uh, make fun of me for it every night, which was pretty funny. Talk about earlier about being selfish. I think that is literally the definition, man. <laughs> it all. Yeah, yeah, I know. It doesn't look good, huh? It's uh, <laughs> let's let's more about me, 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 me. No, right. Uh, it was it was honestly it was it was really um, uh, uh, an amazing experience. I, I'm so thankful and grateful to to my Breaking Benjamin brothers for for giving me the opportunity and just being so supportive of of my solo album to, to do that. You'd be like, ah, oh, let's let him, let's, you know, get him to open the show. And, you know, so it was, it was awesome. Um, but I will say it was difficult because it double duty every night. It was, it was a lot on my voice. So I was, I was really, it was really challenging. And, and I was curious to see if I could even do it, um, which I was, but it was not without its difficulty for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And plus just being out there by yourself, you know, I, I, I totally plan on eventually having a whole band and, and doing the solo thing and, and playing some shows with a full band. But for this, the acoustic thing, it was just me by myself. So um, it was uncomfortable, but it, it also just makes you feel alive, just kind of being out there out of your comfort zone and uh, just, you know, so it was it was cool. Nice. Love that. So what did you guys do? Uh, what you do on New Year's Eve? Any partying? Yeah, take it easy, dude. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Uh, yeah, my wife made some uh, delicious food. We ate, and then uh, yeah, just watched the ball drop. And uh, a few friends of mine Facetimed me, um, you know, from from different places, and um, so that was cool. But uh, other than that, man, I I pretty much stay in on New Year's Eve, uh, unless I'm on tour. Father. Yeah. Since I became a dad, that's kind of been the same thing. My lady passed out at 1130. I had to wake her up. And my daughter, <laughs> who's eight, she was trying her hardest. And like 1140, she finally she popped out. So five minutes before I woke her up. And at that point, she didn't want to be bothered. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was it was yeah, crazy how in my 20s, it was all about how how much partied up can we get? Oh, I'll just be frank. How drunk can we get without being a complete idiot, but still being somewhat there when the when, when it's time to midnight? Now it's just like whatever. I'm lucky if I make it to nine o'clock. <laughs> well, you get up at three o'clock in the morning every day. This guy, <laughs> wow, he's a crazy workaholic, work workout guy, machine beast. All that in a package. It's four foot eleven. Crazy. I know. Wow. It's weird, it? <laughs> I'm, that's when I'm usually going to bed. <laughs> right? I know. Okay, I'll share. I'll share. So uh, on New Year's Day, I, 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 I no idea why, but I decided I was going to grow my hair out for an entire year. But to effectively do it properly, uh, I had to start, you know, from a, a foundation that had nothing. So we shaved the head and that was literally two days ago. So here is in all its beautiful, bald glory, Nick, uh, the beginnings of a year-long hair growth challenge. You happy? I, I told you I'd, I'd show everyone. And along with your challenge, I'm going to grow the mullet for a year. Oh, see? Backwards. <laughs> there you go. Mine's going to turn into a mullet, whether I want it to or not. And I love that. And you just keep it forever. <laughs> but, yeah, the lady, she's kind of... 
she's, I, I, I don't want to say intimidated, but that's kind of the word. It, every time she looks at me now, because she's not used to it, I get a look. She hates it. She hates it. <laughs> but anyway, there you go, Keith. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, there I go, making it all about me again. I apologize. <laughs> you know, I've got the most selfish co host I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only co-host you've ever had. Well, yeah. <laughs> Where were you, Keith, when you heard yourself or any member or, or, you know, when you heard your music played on an actual full-fledged radio station and you were just driving along or at a home, whether for any band you've ever been in, as I know this had to have happened. Uh, where was I? Gosh. Probably driving. Yeah, this was back uh, back in the Knoxville, Tennessee days with uh, my Copper. first band, yeah. Copper. Yeah, yeah, yeah we uh, we got a little bit of uh, regional love from uh, some of the radio stations there in town and around around uh, Knoxville, and uh, it was it was amazing. It's a it's a great feeling, and it always sounds so much better on the radio for some reason. It's like so <laughs> compressed and just I'm like wow, that sounds way better. So it was cool. Very cool. That's one of those things that I love doing, you know, in 20 years working in radio, having, and, and radio is not the same as it used to be. Gosh, in the eighties and nineties and you know, even going farther back, you know, mm -hmm. so different with the implementation of streaming and social oh, yeah. media and et cetera. But when you, there's been a couple times where same thing, some regional bands got to get played on the radio and they heard it for the first time. And I was the one able to provide it, whether the, managers agreed with me or not at the time i just did it better that's great be, better ask for forgiveness than permission type scenario and uh yeah the, being able to do that for them and just their reactions and their fans reactions man love it i'll get that's great times over if i could keep doing that but oh yeah, man radio is kind of that, dead that is that is great that is great man i i i love hearing that and i mean that is uh, honestly we we've had a few uh, of of those type of just champion people like that, that, that back in the day really did the same thing you're talking about, you know, where, you know, they've got all these labels, like, you know, barking at them to play this, play this, play mm -hmm. that, you know, corporate, you know, I got a call from corporate, the Budweiser sponsor says, play this, you know, and you're yeah. just like, and I mean, it's just amazing that, that, uh, you know, you guys were there to, to do that kind of thing, you know, a uh, huge shout out to Anthony Prophet who uh, did that for us in Knoxville and Daniel Bozick. I don't know if you know these gentlemen, but I do not, they, but Anthony they, Prophet, if this ever yeah. reaches you, man, welcome to dad. Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely uh, played copper on the radio when they didn't have to, there was nothing in it for them whatsoever, other than to just support yeah, a few, that's... a few, a few local kids and their dreams. And, you know, I'll never forget it. So much props to you for, for uh, also doing the same. That's awesome, man. I try. I try. JP was the best. <laughs> so when I, I used to throw concerts, or I still do, but for like probably 22, 23 years, and JP was always my radio guy. Like I would bring him Tallboy, for example, and he'd play Tallboy, which was awesome. That's Our one of the bands I was talking about. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's like, it's whoever we had opening, it's like, hey, man, can you put this into rotation for the week leading up to the show? And he usually did it, which was That's really great. Cool. Yeah. The bands got oh. super excited and stop buttering oh, up JP. Yeah. Again, oh, yeah. it's not about me. Stop it. I'm gonna and hit that, you like, hey, we got 12 interviews next week. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that that kind of thing, I mean, you know, I will never forget it for as long as I live. And I guarantee those artists will never forget it for as long as they live. I mean, that is a highlight uh memory for me of my life. So yeah, that's it's amazing, man. Best moment of 21. For Keith Wallen, if you uh, can pinpoint one, I have a couple. Um, there, uh, well, my album came out in uh, August. That was that was cool. Um, I made my first lame TikTok video. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a that's a great moment, but uh, yeah, that was a moment for yeah, me. Um, I have to look it up immediately. Is your name yeah. keep on on TikTok? I'm, I'm kind of slacking, honestly. There, you know, people post every day on that stuff, and I just mm -hmm. it takes me a long time to think of what I'm gonna do, and and you know, because I don't want to just 
do some stupid dance or whatever that everybody does or whatever, you know, I want to make it my own, but I, it's just hard to think up stuff. Too. It's crazy how the music industry has gone into TikTok though, for like picking the next artist and whatnot. And just how yeah. famous like um, Walker Hayes, for example, mm -hmm. I've known that guy for a while and done a couple of shows with him and nothing, nothing, nothing. Then all of a sudden he does fancy like on TikTok and it just blows up. It's yeah. absolutely crazy. Yeah. And, and uh, that's the thing, you know, unless some of these artists have just these think tanks sitting around thinking of ideas for videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these artists, they, they, they have to just sit and think of what they're going to do and do yeah. it themselves. And they have to wear multiple hats. You know, you have to be a videographer, a producer, a singer, a, you know, all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it's definitely challenging. Uh, and especially for, for old dudes like me, where I'm just like, no, I don't want to change. I want to, <laughs> you know, it's like, you got to adapt. Uh, I hear you. So I just followed you on TikTok, and uh, oh, awesome. awesome! And so you get a, you get an extra one. But yeah, I fought the TikTok thing tooth and nail, and finally I, I did. I, I did met, too. I went to Hawaii and I met one of the biggest, like one of the top 150 TikTokers in the world, at least at that point. Yeah. He's got like 10 million followers and very very popular and doing very very well for himself financially now because of TikTok. But I totally met this guy in Hawaii. I had no idea who he was because I'm not a TikToker. But yeah. I am very, very uh, affluent and aware of how important social media can be these days. And yeah. looked him up after the fact and went, oh, man, I was hanging out with this kid. And oh, man, he's pretty gosh darn popular. So at that point, I'm like, all right, I'll make a TikTok. I've got the personality to do some stupid, crazy stuff. Let's 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 here we go. And so yeah. that's about a month into that relationship. And yeah, it's, it's fun. My kids are way better at it than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's just hard for me to think of stuff to do. And, um, plus, um, plus it's also just, I, you know, I, I come from, uh, the era where artists had some, had still had just a mystique about, yep. Yep. uh, you know, where they're, you know, I don't, I don't really need to know what, James Hatfield is eating for breakfast. You right. Know, that's like my ultimate, that's my ultimate hero. And I'm I, sure it was probably eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on. You got <laughs> reference. All right. <laughs> yeah, but no, totally. I mean, it's, um, you know, I, I like, I, some part of me is just like, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to show my whole life. So Hatfield's your hero is what you're saying. Absolutely. Have you met James? I have not. Me neither. And that's a bucket I, list thing. I, I held his guitar. Let's, let's work this. Let's let's try to use your influence and our dad cast influence, and we'll get James on the dad cast, but you will be our special co-host for that episode. Yes. And then we can work it into Breaking Benjamin opening for Metallica at the forum or something. I mean, I, I got high okay. hopes here, you know. And there we I, go. Are we in? The only thing I get to ask though is I get front and center and backstage for that show. <laughs> if you can pull that off, I'm in. Yeah, I, if I can pull that off, I probably get a box seat or something. Whatever the case. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, uh, Keith and 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 Kirk, or not Keith, you're Keith, James and Kirk. Those I, you know, Lars. I'm sorry, Lars. <laughs> I look at it this way, dude. If Rogan can get James on, so can we. Yeah, has he been on? He's been on Rogan. Yeah. Well, who hasn't been on Joe Rogan? Yeah, I don't know who was on Rogan. Well, uh, James. No way. Really? Yeah. yeah. He talked about his bees and uh, living on the farm and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's very, oh, man. It was very, it was a cool episode. Like very, wow. cool interview. I got to find that one of my all time favorites, actually. Well, anything That's to do cool. with Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, name dropping Joe Rogan, um, yeah. algorithm, <laughs> Joe Rogan. It uh, would be, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is, is Nick's a fan of? So hey, Nick, you know, we haven't been on Joe Rogan yet. So there you go. But there's no. there's two, two dudes that haven't been on Rogan. <laughs> Fair enough, Keith. Have you been on Joe Rogan? Can't say that I have. All right. So yeah, three guys who've never yeah. been on Joe Rogan. Joe wow, Rogan. we're just going off the rails on this here, son of a bitch, aren't we? So typically, 
we'll do a fast five segment. That's where Nick asks you five random questions. But if I know Nick, three of those questions had something to do with children. So <laughs> are we going to do a fast two, Nick? Or we'll do a fast gonna, one. We'll just, we'll, we'll ask. One. Yeah, we'll just, yeah. I, you, all right. Corey, I, had, I, had, I had five solid questions, like four really good dad questions. Obviously, we can ask those. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll just do a fast one. Okay, but I'm going to add a few because you know I okay. always do. All right. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Probably right now at the moment, I would it would say don't lose hope. Awesome. Period. I know that's cheesy and cliche, but honestly, I just... We need that, though. I feel like the world needs it. I don't know. Yeah, or, you know, unity or be kind or all these things. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good answer. Or just go outside. <laughs> yeah. Go outside. I'd love to. Where are you at right now? What town? What city? What state? So I am in uh, Tri Cities, Tennessee, at the moment. Okay. And how's the weather? Of, it's cold. It was warm this whole week, but it's it's cold now. Uh, yeah, it's a little little close to Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, yeah. It's, I, uh, uh, supposed to, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say it was supposed to have a big winter storm last night, but it missed us. So, it, but oh, it is colder now. Uh, ours is probably heading your direction in about seven or eight days. We yeah. we're in the Pacific Northwest. I'm a California kid. I'm a Los Angeles, Southern California kid at heart. So I love, and I'm used to the warm weather last 20 years. I've lived in the Pacific Northwest where we get every single season. And we are currently in the middle of a uh, pretty record setting set of storms that have come in since Christmas. So it's been like wow. 21 degrees at night. Sometimes there's snow, sometimes there's not, but you say get outside. Not right yeah. now. No, it's freezing, yeah, right man. Now it's pouring down <laughs> oh man. Just got to get, get some skis on and go do it. Oh, okay. That's just it. Our local ski resort, Mount Ashland free plug, uh, literally closed because you can't get there because the blizzard is so oh. bad on the roads just to get up there. Oh, that um, sucks. It's <laughs> friggin' batty. There's yeah, no wow. way out of Oregon. I mean, if something terrible were to happen, you you're can't. Stuck. Yeah, you're stuck. You know, only way out is by plane, essentially. You know, there's okay. no driving, maybe a train, but you can play one show, Keith, with any artist or band, living or dead. Who's it going to be? Oh man. Uh okay. Well, my my father was a singer. He he is uh deceased. And I would play a show with him, probably. Uh yeah, oh, he um he he was a he was a singer back in the day, back in back in the sixties. And um yeah, that would be that would be a that is the best Something answer we've heard yet, at least for me, in my opinion. Yeah. That's, you know, it, it reminds me of another question I always ask that most people don't think about. And I tell them this answer from someone who's been on before and they hear it and they go, oh, I should have said that. That's one of those moments, man. That's yeah. love that. I would uh, I'd probably choose the same, even though my dad couldn't play anything. But I'd still go to a show with them. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask that question. Maybe you'll be insightful. Uh, what's one thing you cannot leave the house without? <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, my phone. Yep. And there you go. Typical answer. You know what yeah. George Thorogood said? What? Without kissing my wife. Damn. That's, that's what I went. God, exactly. Every time you hear it, you go, "See, that's not." I was thinking material, and uh, just the one of the greatest answers to that question that I've ever heard. You, Keith, are in that category for the previous question. Now, yeah, no sweet. one answered it better, man. So you are uh, up there sweet. with the legendary so on, George Thorogood. What? Nick? On that note, do you have any new Breaking Benjamin stuff or anything you can tell us about? Because I am. Um, I don't Benjamin. have anything that. Um, Nothing too much set in stone. I mean, we're, we're always, we're constantly writing. Mm -hmm. We're always working on stuff. Uh, but as of, as of right now, I have no new monumental groundbreaking updates on anything other than, um, you know, new music will be done when it's, when it's done. That's it. I don't know. <laughs> this might right. answer the same question, but what, uh, in Keith Wallen's world, in his mind, 
What is, uh, if there's a single most important goal for you to achieve in 2022, what would it be? Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. You know, I want to say I, I, more of the same, I guess, just trying to work on music, trying to be a good person, try to be, um, you know, the best person I can. And, and, um, I don't know. Try to uplift people around me. I don't know. There you go. That's try to just help in general. I just want to be a help in general. So whatever that, however I can. So you want to be uh, uh, like the professional humankind assistant. Yeah. I just don't know. I, that's a, that's a difficult question. You know, obviously um, you know, you think about the selfish things in your life, you know, oh, I'd like to make more money. I'd like to blah, 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 you know, but it's just like, I don't know. That's just, I don't know. doesn't feel right. So I just want to, are you a sports I mean, obviously, fan? What's that? Are you a sports fan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All for right. sure. I'm football? Huge. I'm a huge college football fan. Okay. Yeah. Who's your college team? Tennessee Volunteers. All right. How do you feel about the old uh, repeat Alabama, Georgia coming up here? They could both tie and you'd be fine with it, right? Meh. <laughs> that's how i feel <laughs> i mean you know it's too bad they can't both lose right that's why i said they should tie yeah now being that you're in tennessee are you a titan fan i am okay all right well i'm a raider yeah. fan and as of this recording right now nick keith the raiders got a game coming up on sunday if they win they're in the friggin' playoffs with a healthy quarterback at least at this point um mm -hmm. And we might see Tennessee in the playoffs if it gets that far, but I'm excited. I mean, I'm a huge Raider fan, so it's been like literally 30 years of just def def deafening disappointment for this guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's been that's been uh, being a Tennessee fan for like the last 15, 20 years or something. Ever since yeah. uh, you know, they got rid of Phil Formal, uh, Fulmer, we've had uh, all kinds of different coaches. I think we got a great coach now. Um, with Josh Heupel, but, uh, yeah, uh, dude, the Raiders, you guys have had a really tough season with the whole John Gruden thing. I mean, yeah. to, to even get through the season and to have a chance yeah. to be in the playoffs with that much of a distraction and that huge blow up fallout thing is pretty incredible. So it says something about the tenacity and the grit, I think of the absolutely. Team and, and, and Derek Carr, cause you know, you know, he's the leader in that team. I don't, you know, no matter what anyone says, he's the one to bring them together. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And then of course the uh, the rugs DUI crash killing scenario. It's amazing what they put together. And worst yeah. case, man, if they lose next Sunday, it's still a winning season because they won nine games. And that's what I'm going to hang my hat on and say for the entire off season in the fetal position. If that's the scenario that plays out, <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy about that. Wow. Okay, I didn't mean to get all crazy on the sports. I just wanted to find out who your team was. Um, I'm backing up the question I asked you answered your father. Okay. You can play any show with any band or artist living or dead. That is not your father. Uh, um, trying to get the musical influences, man. It's a sneaky way of asking hey, that hey, question. I got to step out for a second. I have an emergency. Okay. Uh, let me see what artists, um, could it be, can it be multiple artists? Sure. Like just a crazy hodgepodge of different genres, and oh, you could play a festival with thirty bands, living or dead. Is that a better? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> all right, I would say. Uh, I mean, obviously these aren't going to work. They're not going to work together. But I don't care. It's my, it's my special dream concert. Let's do. Uh, let's do Frank Sinatra in there. Okay. Let's do. Uh, let's do Metallica. Uh, <laughs> God, you imagine Frank coming out if he was still alive and. Sharing the stage with Jay. Oh, I think hell would freeze over, man. That's so awesome. I mean, I'd just be there the for visualization it. right now. It's great because yeah, Frank is my I, dad's favorite, and Metallica is yeah. one of my favorites. So it's yep, yep. I would be there for it. I'd be like, yep, let's do this. Um, <laughs> gosh, I don't know. Um, who else? Who else? Maybe, uh, I don't know. Let's just leave it at that. Those are the those are uh, my two, my two biggies. Now who's the most importantly? Is Frank close? 
for Metallica or does Metallica close for Frank? <laughs> now, funny you uh, ask that because I was picturing it in my head and I just pictured two stages on just opposite ends of a, you know, I don't know. They can't, they can't, you can't pick an opener or a closer with that. I know, uh, right? But you can't yeah. miss it either. So if you go to this show, you're, you're caught. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough one. Keith, uh, I said, if you could do any show, and we turned it into a festival, but he chose Frank Sinatra and Metallica. And then I said, can you imagine if they played that show? How, how, yeah, good stuff, right? Yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, we don't, we don't have to make that decision. That, that'd be, uh, (laughs) they'd have to settle that. Yeah, they would. And maybe they're doing that somewhere in the the concerts in the sky up there. (laughs) There Easy. (laughs) <laughs> everything good man you all right yeah yeah we're good all right cool 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 keith wallen he is got a solo project going on he's a formerly is copper still a thing no it's not i mean we uh i you know i'm still friends with uh those guys and and um you know we played a, a reunion show a, a few years ago so you know still it's one of those things we could always just kind of get together and play a show every once in a while but as, as far as a a working current band now. Fair enough. All right. I got two more questions and then we're going to let you go. All right. And, and these are important, serious, and very digging questions. All right. What's your favorite food? <laughs> now, now this is very important. Okay. Uh, so... Like you're start, you're trapped on an island, and you can only eat this for the rest of your life. What cereal? I mean, I know it's so cliche and over said, but I mean, I would say pizza. Okay, but what's on the pizza? Okay, I'm glad you asked. That's important. More, more specifically, New York thin crust pizza. Okay. Straight uh, I'll, I'll go with cheese and mushrooms. That's you and it. I would not get along on that island. I'd, I would definitely I'd not give you all my that. mushrooms. I'm a, I'm a deathly allergic to mush- mushrooms. I would die. <laughs> it's well, a- then, then Survivor Island, <laughs> yeah. it's about Keith and JP. Yeah. You guys are not allowed on my island. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting on the couch. You're scrolling through TV. If that's a th- something you do, a movie is on. What is the movie that you cannot pass up and stop and have to watch every time you see it? Predator. Yeah, come on. Oh, come on. Yeah. Stick yeah. around. Yeah. Okay, Predator. Definitely. You won the ugly motherfucker or something along those lines. <laughs> hey, there you go, Nick. The, I dropped the first F-bomb for the first time in like nine months. I'm so proud of you. That's Thank awesome. you, man. I appreciate it. But I was a quote, so I'm not you know, entirely sure that counts. Speaking of F-bombs, I just binged Cobra Kai Season 4. So they did I. Quite a few F-bombs in Cobra Kai Season 4. Yes, there were. They allow a certain wow. I was like, what is going on here? This is supposed to be a kid and family movie. Well, but Keith, you're what, 42, 41? 41. 41. Okay. So yeah, I'm the, I'm the elder statement of, of this group here, of this little three man motley crew. Uh, but karate, kid, we're still in the same genre, in my opinion, as far as movies in the eighties. Yep. Have you watched Cobra Kai and are you a fan of the original karate kids in this? Cause I cannot, it's so cheese ball and not that good, but it's still so amazingly awesome. So great. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I am all caught up. Uh, except I have not watched any of season four. I've, okay. I've watched all the movies and I've, I've seen the first three seasons and I would agree it. There are some parts where you're just like, Oh man, this is cheesy <laughs> as hell. But, uh, right. but you're still just can't not watch. Cause it's just, it really is great nostalgia. And, you know, at this point we're all like decades invested into these <laughs> characters at this point. So uh, yes, they need to bring back Dukes of hazard as a TV show and Airwolf. If they do that, then I can die. Ahead. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to drop a, another F bomb. Funny story, by the oh, way. So my Nick wife, was, in. all right, this is involves my baby. So my wife was doing something. She dropped something and she's like, ah, oh, fuck. And Liam said, fuck 45 times in a row. <laughs> it was, it was incredible. I'm like, dude, you're 18 months old. And you just said, fuck 45 times in a row. I was so I, was, I now I now I have proud. to tag this episode as inappropriate <laughs> language, Nick. 
It, well, we could have said it once, but now I got it. Yes. Now that's an inappropriate thing. That's great. Yeah, you it was, shed, it was, you it shed was, but a single tear. I did. I was like, damn, <laughs> high five, bro. And high five. And then he gave me knuckles. I was like, dude. Oh, man. man. <laughs> that's amazing. That's you guys awesome. Can I reach it from here? Let's see. No, see, that's the I kind can't. of stuff I'm missing out on. Okay. I got to show you now. I know. Then I was like, all right, now I got to send him to church with grandma because she goes to Catholic church. And I'm like, you know, we'll get him to drop an F-bomb when the when the priest is quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a quick Hail Mary. Yeah, exactly. Quick, it'll just our father. It'll it's all the, good. The church. It'll be great. <laughs> do you do you have any tattoos? Zero. Wow. As a rock star musician and crazy, the awesome, good band. That surprises me a touch. Yeah, kind of. It's kind of odd. This is it a personal uh, right decision now. or just never happened? Honestly, there was a few years back where I was really close to getting one. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm just getting one to get one at this point. And do I really know what I want? No. Am I going to like it five years from now? Probably not, because most things I like five, you know, most things I liked five years ago, I don't like now. Right. So, yeah, just decided against it. All right. So anyway, I've got it. Nick's got like 80 zillion covering his almost entire body. I've got a few. Um, but my next one, my daughter, um, she wrote me a note and then drew a picture. And at the bottom of that note, it was basically, I love you, daddy. And, you know, you're my best friend, et cetera, et cetera, which mm, heartwarming. But I don't know if you can see that. Oh, of course. It's it. It's a fist bump. Can you see it? Oh, it yeah. Yeah. Through? I can see it a little bit. Yep. So That's I'm going to, I'm taking, I'm literally taking that to the tattoo shop and say, copy that. And we just got to figure out a spot, but daddy, daddy she, she drew that. On. Yeah. On her own. That's really good. She I couldn't have done YouTube that. on her iPad and they, and they've got like instructional videos. So she just follows along with all these oh, artists and cool. uh, she's getting real good. Um, I mean, you see it. Oh, this green screen is killing me. <laughs> anyway, she, she drew a star Wars <laughs> character. Is that, is that no, no, no. I don't know if you can see that. Is that coming through? Nope. It's not coming through. I'm just going to have to add these as pictures to the photograph later or something, et cetera. It's important that you love your kids. Keith doesn't understand this yet. He's got an idea. He's a loving uncle, probably the best way to go about doing it. You know, after having kids myself, like we mentioned earlier in the episode, but he has left the option open for having kids in the future. It's it tick tock though, Keith, 41 years old, just saying, I don't want to sound like a, you know, a nuisance to your mother or anything, but Keith Darwin, you gotta, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. I'm 42. <laughs> Jason, no, 18 month old around is hard as hell. <laughs> it's like, I, I get up and I work out every day. I run five miles a day and this little guy wears me out. I bet. I it's bet. Crazy. It's a, yeah, that's a, that's a young man's game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a, a final, I, I keep saying that, but I'm having I so much fun with you, Keith. You just won't shut um, up. <laughs> what is on tap in your life, and whether it be personal or professional, literally in the next two weeks? Two weeks. Uh, well, I'm taking a trip to Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hang out there for a bit. Can you uh, shed the reason? I, this well, is a pleasure. So we have a, we have a place out there uh, that we rent. And... Um, yeah, just uh, just checking up on it. Going to stay for there for a bit and uh, probably work on some new solo tunes with uh, my friend and my friend slash producer pal uh, out there. So, yeah, that's it. When you say L.A., L.A. is a big place. Uh, I know it's easy to say just L.A., but I'm from there. Mm -hmm. What town? Is it actually L.A. or you somewhere on the outskirts? So uh, it's a little bit... I guess it's in between downtown and Pasadena is where okay. so, our yeah. place is. All right. Okay. Yeah. Next week. Montecito. Montecito. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Montecito, yeah, Mont California. Yeah. More Montecito Heights, I guess. That's the, that's the not street. Too terribly far away from Vegas. Nick's going to be in Vegas uh, first week of February. Yeah. Are you a Bobby fan of gone. Vegas? Are you a Bobby fan of gone. Vegas, Keith? You know, I love Vegas. Oh, so um, for some reason it's i'm so i feel like i'm very just kind of for the most part a, an introvert but i for some reason every time i'm in las vegas it just has this crazy cool excitement and energy just in the air 
uh, it's either that or it's just that the it's just <laughs> it's just uh, pure just desperation in the air from people just trying to win money all the time. But uh, I don't know. I like I just like it. It's cool. I'm kind I'm of excited. I'm going to explore outside of the strip this time and see what else is out there. And so we have the guys that manage that down there. So. Lots of dirt. I, well, I'm excited to see that. I want to see Ben's backyard is BMX. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah on for the kid and skateboard yeah. ramp he's got going on that would be pretty cool yeah. all right keith well I, i'm going to leave you with uh an opportunity to share your platform if there's any like instagram facebook websites you'd like to share to let everyone know where they can check out your solo stuff of course breaking benjamin etc cetera, etc cetera. and then uh if there's any parting advice that you can give to our viewers and our listeners on any topic which you've given earlier now's the time and we'd love to hear it sure absolutely um so i'm on all the social media apps uh including tiktok TikTok, yes including tiktok uh but there's not much on there but uh the handle is at kj wallen that's also my twitter and instagram handles as well facebook just my name keith wallen I have a website, keithwallen.com, Keith Wallen, blah, 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 all that. Um, no selfish, Keith. I know, I know. I know. Everything's it's about just, you. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. This is, the, this is the worst part about being a musician, honestly. It's you the know, most uncomfortable is trying to it, sell, man. trying to sell myself. I know. I got to play the game. Uh, but as far as advice, uh, I guess, um, whatever it is, whether it's music, whether it's your career, whether it's love whether it's life whether it's anything the best thing i could ever say uh, in, in my mind is to not ever give up on what you're working on because i would not be in my career i would not be where i am in my life if i had given up on music um because there are plenty of opportunities where i could have just been like man this just isn't working i just i just this isn't working i need to do something else and Either I was just too stupid to quit or, <laughs> or what, but, um, uh, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like if you really, 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 really want something realistically that it, that's in the realm of possibility that you could possibly do, just keep doing it and keep manifesting it and keep, I don't know, filling up that positivity and pouring that into that. And, uh, even if you don't quite get there, you might, I don't know, learn a lot about yourself and find something else that's close to that, that you might like, but anyway, a long winded answer. I don't and, know. And even if it isn't realistic in your mind, screw them. Keep trying anyway. Absolutely. Cause mine was definitely not realistic. And I had a lot of people and a lot of doors slammed in my face and people saying, you'll never do that. And I would just be like, okay, but I'm going to try anyway. And so I don't know. Good advice from Mr. Keith Wallen. He is a member of the band Breaking Benjamin and, of course, an amazing solo artist as well. Uh, check him out. Keith, I want to thank you very much for taking the time out of your day and joining us on DadCast. You've been amazing. Uh, he is not a dad, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm uncle. It's like Uncle Cast. Uncle Cast. <laughs> yeah. Yay. We've actually got uh, some, some things planned in the future, and that might be another, uh, you know, a spinoff. Of, of what yeah. we're doing. There you go. Mom cast, dad cast, kid cast, uncle cast, auntie cast. Yeah. Pretty soon, <laughs> pretty soon him and I are going to be grandpa cast, you know. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, it's uh, it really fun hanging out with y'all. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can play a show sometime uh yeah, again awesome. near yeah. you guys and yeah we can all hang so yeah, absolutely appreciate He'll y'all. Be in touch we're we've got lots of plans we're putting together a bunch of cool things we'd love to have you out here or heck maybe we even come out your direction and interview the dads in breaking benjamin that you know do have kids or something i don't want to throw absolutely. Them out there. <laughs> uh, you've been amazing uh, good luck and godspeed with all your future endeavors keith and uh, again Thank you very much for everyone else listening and watching this. Uh, please like it up, subscribe, comment, do all of that good stuff. It really helps out the channel. We appreciate you and we will see you next week. Have a great rest of your day.